Hi, my name is Javier. I'm a research scientist at Flower Labs, and this is the very first video in the tutorial series we have put together on how to design step-by-step -step a federated learning pipeline using Flower for simulation. In this video, I'm going to walk you through on how to set up your Python environment. I will be using Conda, but you are very welcome to use any other tool you are maybe more familiar with, maybe virtual environments or maybe even poetry. The decision is, decision is entirely up to you. Then, once the environment has been created, I will install PyTorch. I will install the latest version of Flower, which at this point is Flower 1.4. I will be using, I will be installing as well Ray, which is a tool the virtual client engine uses to run simulated federated learning workloads with Flower. And then I will install Hydra, which is the configuration system we're going to be using throughout this tutorial series. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So for this tutorial, uh, I'm going to be creating our Python environment using Conda. You don't have to use Conda. You can use virtual environments or any other environment management tool of your, that you typically use. For example, maybe you'd like to use Poetry. That's totally fine. But if you want to follow these steps line by line, command by command, especially in this part of the tutorial, you want to be using Conda. And also, I'm assuming that you already have Conda in your system. So, but before we start creating our Conda environment for the tutorial, let me explain what we are seeing in the screen now. So, I'm inside that directory, which is just uh, one level into my home directory called tutorial. In this directory, there is only a main, a Python script, which is the one shown here in VS Code which you can see is pretty much empty. There is only like a structure that we're going to be following to create our federated learning pipeline using Flower. This, this is a machine I'm connecting remotely. It's a Ubuntu machine. It's a Ubuntu desktop running the latest Ubuntu. You don't need to run the latest Ubuntu, but it has a GPU. So in this case, it's going to allow us to, to see how we can tune our simulation to make better use of the available resources on our GPU. But that's the content for the last part of the tutorial. So now let's go and create our Conda environment. So for this, we're going to use the command Conda create. We're going to give it the name a uh, flower tutorial. And we're going to use Python 3.8. Um, you, you don't need to use Python 3.8, uh, but probably you don't want to use an older, older version than 3.8. Uh, now we just need to activate our environment. Depending on how you have installed Conda, you might need to tweak it slightly this command. So maybe instead of doing source activate, you might need to do Conda activate instead. Okay, so now Conda list. You can see this is like a almost empty Python environment managed by Conda. So what we need to do next is we need to decide what machinery framework we want to use for our simulations. <coughs> Sorry. Remember that uh, Flower is framework agnostic. So this means that it's entirely up to you to decide what framework do you want to use. You can use PyTorch in your TensorFlow. You can use JAX. The choice is yours. For me, I like to use uh, PyTorch. So I'm going to install PyTorch in my Conda environment. So I can do that by typing conda install. And I'm going to use a fairly recent version of PyTorch. It's not the latest, but you are, fr you are free to use the latest or any other version. As you can see, I'm installing this with uh, CUDA support because my machine has a GPU, so I want to be able to use it. And this is going to take, I think, just a couple of minutes, which gives, gives me a good opportunity to talk to you about for example, uh, Conda, how I like to use Conda, how I like to install Conda, and in particular, uh, Mini Conda. So typically I will go to this, uh, if I am if I have a new system, a new PC, a new laptop, I would go to this website and I will copy the corresponding installer for it. In the case uh, we are talking about now, it's a Linux machine. So I will get this installer by typing wget, and this will download this uh, bash script. 
into, in this case, my home. You can see it right here, it's, it's this one. First, I, we need to make it executable. So you can do that by running this. And now you can see it's green, meaning that it's, it can be executed. You will execute it like so. Uh, and if you press enter, that I'm not gonna press it because I already have it installed, it will walk you through the steps to get Miniconda uh, set up in your system, which is uh, pretty easy and pretty convenient if you have multiple projects. Um, okay, but enough about that because our PyTorch uh, installation is completed. Next, what we're gonna install is Flower. We're gonna use uh, one of the latest no, the latest version of Flower, which is Flower 1.4. So we're going to do pip install Flower 1.4. And we're going to use uh, an additional package that is not strictly needed, but is highly recommended, which is called Hydra. Hydra is a very powerful configuration tool based around YAML, uh, but it's not a normal YAML. It's a, you can think of it as a supercharged YAML that gives you a lot of flexibility, brings a lot of flexibility into your code. So you can make big changes like changing the model that my clients are gonna be using or change entirely my strategy without having to modify the source code. You can do this change by pointing to a different config file, for example. We are not gonna go all in with Hydra today. That will be the content of the next video, which by the way, the next video, we're gonna take the code exactly as we do it today, as exactly as we complete the code today. And then the next video, we'll see how we can replace different portions of the code with, with Hydra and how that will help us to make the code more versatile. Um, so let's install Hydra by doing pip install Hydra core. And then the last package we need for doing flower simulation is called Ray. Ray is a, a package that allows you to run uh, any kind of workload in a parallel way, but not just parallel, more interestingly, in a resource aware parallel way. So you can say, for example, oh, I want this function to be running using one CPU core instead of the N cores I have available in my system. And by setting this, how, what, what, what's the amount of resources my tasks need, uh, Ray and the virtual client engine in Flower can therefore schedule all these tasks in a resource aware fashion. And why is this important? Is because in this way you can uh, run any workload with the amount of resources you have. In mind you have, you want to run a thousand clients per round, but your system only has four CPUs. Well, with the virtual client engine, you are going to still be able to run this workload. The things that instead of running a thousand clients concurrently, they are going to run, for example, four at a time in a queue. The first four, the next four, the next four, and then once you have completed all the 1000, then the round will end. So this property makes the virtual client engine in Flower uh, super, super powerful. So we are going to install Ray like so. We are not going to use the latest version of Ray. Uh, this is something I will touch on at the end of the video. So this is the recommended version for uh, flower simulations with the current version of uh, flower. So you will see when you install this, which just takes a few seconds, there are some warnings uh, related to the gRPC IO package. You can ignore this for flower simulations, so it's totally fine to continue. Okay, so now we have installed everything we needed. We have installed our machine learning framework of choice. In my case, I chose to use PyTorch. It has GPU support, so I'm gonna be able to uh, spawn clients making use of the GPU. We have installed uh, Flower, which is gonna orchestrate the entire federated learning pipeline. Where we have installed Hydra, which is our configuration tool, which is gonna make our, our life much easier the moment we want to really uh, scale up our experiments and the complexity of our pipeline. And finally, we have uh, install Ray, which is the package used by the virtual client engine to run further learning simulations in a resource aware and scalable uh, manner. So before we, f we finish with this section, 
of the video, let me show you very briefly how you can make use of this Hydra config very easily. So first, uh, we are going to import Hydra. That's the uh, first thing to do. You can import Hydra like so. And Hydra uh, integrates with your main in a very, uh, very, very, I would say, peculiar way using a Hydra decorator. Uh, it needs uh, a couple of arguments. One is config path, which is going to tell it where are the config files in, in our current project. That will be a, a directory called conf. We're going to create it right now. And then we're going to, we need to specify as well, uh, well, we can specify as well what, what is the default config. For example, if I just run Python main, what should be the config to use? So this is done with config and name variable that we're going to call it base. So for that, we're going to, I'm going to create a, a file called base yellow. I like to use base as the default config, so you can see it here. Currently, yeah, let me put it here. Currently is empty. And then there is another argument that is, not, I think, it's not strictly needed. But if we set it, it will uh, prevent the code from uh, throwing a warning. So we are going to set it to version base equals not. Okay. So what this decorator would do is it will parse our config or partially parse it and it's going to pass it uh, to the main and this config is going to be type uh, ticked config which we need to also uh, define here so omega conf is, is another config uh, framework i'm not entirely sure exactly what's the relationship of hydra and omega conf but omega conf Let's say that Hydra uses some of the Omega Conf components because Omega Conf is some sort of configuration standard or, or something. I'm not a real expert there. So if you know what's the deal between Hydra and Omega Conf, please leave it in the comments. It will be an interesting discussion. So from Omega Conf, we can import a uh, config and we can import Omega Conf, which will be useful uh, very soon. So what we want to also make sure is that our this is not being auto-completed, but maybe I just need to toggle it because yes, that was the case. Sometimes if you create an environment, it won't be properly activated in VS Code. So you need to, oh, I think you didn't see exactly what I was touching. Basically here, you can decide what is the environment that is going to be pointing to in your auto-completion. So make sure you choose the one we created, which in, in our case is Flower Tutorial. As you can see here, I have really many, many, many uh, Python, many Conda environments because there are many projects in my machine. But let's stick with the, like, the one we created. And as you can see, uh, all these packages are being properly recognized because they are installed in our, in our envir environment. So the first thing we're going to do is to uh, let's print the config. So for that, we, we can do omega conf dot to YAML. Let's print them as a YAML. If we don't do it as a YAML, it will be printed as a Python dictionary, which is all right. But the moment you have a big config, and trust me, configs can get really huge in federated learning, you wouldn't want to see a five line Python dictionary being printed in your terminal. It's much better if this is structured as a YAML. So I think that's pretty good. What we're going to do is first let's create, let's add some elements to our config some typical elements you would find in a typical federated learning pipeline. So for example, um, the number of rounds, let's set it to 10. Let's set the number of total clients we have in the entire experiment. So none clients, let's set it to 100. We are gonna set something else, which is gonna be config fit, config fit, which it will become apparent exactly what it is later when we define our strategy here but for now i can give you a brief brief glimpse of what it is this is a config that we're that the server is going to be sending to every client when they are 
ask to, to do local training. So what things would we want to tell the clients to, to set? For example, we might want to tell them what learning way to use. And why would we, what, why the server would tell the clients to, to set the learning rate in one way or another? So for example, one reason would be that maybe we want a higher learning rate in early, in the early rounds of the learning and a smaller learning rate later. Because as we know, once the model has converts uh, for a number of rounds, maybe the, num the amount of the, the step changes to the global model should be smaller, right? Other things we might want to set, for example, um, momentum in our optimizer, for instance. Maybe we this is something we want to tweak as well. So those are some examples. We'll be adding more elements here in our config, but for now, uh, that's good enough. So let me activate our environment. Tutorial. And if I run this, see, if we run the experiment, we didn't specify anything. By default, Hydra took the, the base config in the directory conf that points to here. You don't need to specify. This should be the name, not the extension. And then this, this config uh, has been, uh, let's say, arranged as a YAML, and we can see it right here. If we don't do it like this, you will be getting something like this, which, you know, is fine for this type of config, but the moment we have something bigger, uh, this, won't be, this will be too difficult to read. All right, so this is the end of this part of setting up the, the environment for simulation.